Does anyone else feel like speakers have been ignored lately? With all the amazing headphones on the market right now, outside of a few higher-end studio monitor options, there really hasn't been all that much innovation or movement in the speaker space for some time now. Well, things might be about to change. Guys, meet the Sound Blaster X Katana from Creative Labs. Uh, this is an under-monitor audio system designed for gamers who want to experience the extra layer of sound immersion along with a few key features that might attract setup enthusiasts. But first, quick message from our sponsor. This Black Friday, NCX PC Impact Tower Gaming PCs featuring GeForce GTX 10 series graphics are an even sweeter deal with big discounts. A free Corsair Void Gaming headset, a copy of Watch Dogs 2, plus even more swag. Click the link in the description to learn more. The Katana is priced at $300, that may appear high for a gaming soundbar, however, given the feature set and sonic elements, it is fair. Before going too far, let me backtrack my experience with desktop speakers. My first pair was the Edifier S330D. Uh, it was a 2.1 speaker system and I absolutely enjoyed listening to them. I then upgraded to the Bose Companion 20s, which is a 2.0 speaker system, and while audio-wise it was a downgrade from my previous set, I wanted to achieve a cleaner desktop setup. And the Bose did look quite pretty and they were a much better fit for my setup. Let me tell you, looking back, and I think that's a perfect example of form over function, I certainly don't have enough room for proper studio monitors, so I was grateful for what I had. Then out of nowhere, the Katana shows up at the studio looking for a spot at my desk. And at first sight, I was a little intrigued by the form factor. It's roughly 24 inches wide and it weighs about three and a half pounds, which isn't too bad. And it fits perfectly in confined spaces. It's solidly built and the company has done a fantastic job with the compact, but still great looking design. Now, along with the soundbar, you do get a dedicated subwoofer that features a large five and a quarter inch driver housed in a wooden enclosure. Uh, and this connects directly to the soundbar via a proprietary cable. In terms of connectivity, the Katana is really flexible. Uh, you get your standard power, subwoofer jack, dedicated 3.5 millimeter headphone and microphone connectors, an auxiliary input, optical in to take advantage of Dolby Digital Audio, a USB flash drive port that can play music directly from a flash drive, and a micro USB port. Uh, this micro USB is designed to transmit high res 24-bit 96,000 megahertz digital audio signals directly from a PC, and my testing was done through this port. Bluetooth 4.2 connectivity has made its way to the Katana. In order to activate this, you'll need to hold the power button for a few seconds and the integrated display will output the pairing mode. And from there, you're just a few steps away from connecting your smartphone to the system. Basically, the Katana is very, very versatile when it comes to device compatibility. While in control, the source switch and lighting preset buttons are located right beside the power button. The cherry on top of this is the inclusion of a dedicated remote that consists of all the basic controls you need. The layout is fairly simple and easy to use. You have the power button along with the mute button. Right beneath there is a bass button uh, that can be used to adjust bass levels, followed by media playback controls and volume adjust buttons. Uh, there's also a dedicated button that cycles through different audio presets, a separate display on off button, a lightning preset that cycles through different lighting effects that I'll talk about in a bit. And finally, you have the source buttons. There are four drivers in total integrated inside the soundbar. Uh, the top two upward facing drivers are dedicated towards mid-range uh, and the last two tweeters are placed behind the speaker grill. Uh, this follows Creative's tri-amplified design which basically consists of three amplifiers, uh, one dedicated towards higher frequencies, one for the mids and finally one for the lows, i.e. the subwoofer. In total you get a continual 75 watts of RMS power and a peak of 150 watts. Feeding all of this is a proprietary Sound Blaster multi-core DSP and a certified Dolby Digital Decoder. Uh, this pairing is supposed to provide everything from fully customizable hardware-powered audio restoration to real-time voice processing and 7.1 virtual surround sound. 2016 is all about RGB and that has made its way to the Katana. There's a single LED strip underneath the device uh, and what else can I say? If you're interested in color matching your peripherals or your setup in general, then this could be it. There are 16.8 million colors to choose from and they can be configured through the driver software. Speaking of the driver software, I found it to be a hit and miss. While it kept crashing on my workstation PC every time when I tried launching the app, my MSI GT72 gaming laptop had no issues whatsoever. 
Remember, I'm working with a pre-release driver software and the team over Creative are hard at work making sure the actual release software is free from issues. When the software did work, it was extremely intuitive and allowed for a massive amount of customization. Uh, taking a close look, you're greeted with the dashboard tab that displays a brief overview of the lighting, the EQ, and the Blaster X acoustic sound engine setting. Now, towards the left, you'll notice a specific selection of pre-configured audio and lighting profiles that are optimized for certain playback needs. For example, there's a profile for gaming, concert, cinema, and night mode, which dynamically adjusts the volume to sustain that calm and relaxed listening atmosphere. You'll also notice specific profiles for certain games like Battlefield 1, COD, CSGO, and Overwatch, which is nice, but I'm hoping future updates would expand the selection. You can also create your own personalized sound profile by playing around with the EQ and the acoustic engine, and that's something I ended up doing rather than relying on the handy presets. There's also a scout mode that enhances footsteps, speech, and weaponry handling, but unfortunately, this beta version doesn't come with that option. If you decide to connect the microphone to the Katana, there are a few features that might help streamers have some fun, like noise reduction and voice morphing capabilities. Uh, both of which are interesting additions. Just having these shows how much time and effort Creative put into this product. The lighting tab is pretty basic to work around with. There are six different effects to choose from and you can adjust the color, the speed, depending on your preference. Do note that the direction can only be altered with the wave preset. If you want to experience the full potential of the Katana, the driver software is a killer tool which could place it above other options in this category. I can't end this review without talking about the most important factor of a sound system. The sound. If you recall the part where I talked about my experience with desktop speakers, there was one thing in common among them and that was their price points. This is a $300 system and honestly, I was blown away with the sound quality coming out of the Katana. There's plenty of detail and the high ends are treated almost perfectly with fantastic definition. I didn't notice any harshness or distortion at higher volumes and I'll caution you, this system gets loud. I mean, really loud, almost to a point where you can use this as your living room speaker to complement your TV. The subwoofer handles bass really well and you can control the levels through the included remote control. Overall, if I were to put the sound quality in simple terms, it's just amazing. I even thought to myself, why didn't Creative Labs come up with the Katana before I bought the Bose Companion 20s? And just to compare the two, here's a sound test. What was truly amazing was that even without the system at ear level, it still outperformed my expectations. If you get a chance to listen to the Katana in person, certainly do so. I had a great time gaming with the Katana too. Remember, it's targeted towards gamers, but I enjoyed listening to my flag files and watching videos as well. Regardless, it was an immersive experience playing Battlefield 1. Ambient noise along with vocals were well defined and there's a good sense of positional awareness which is always awesome, gunshots were powerful and explosions felt like explosions thanks to the subwoofer, so overall I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the Katana. Many other soundbars from companies like Vizio, Samsung and Yamaha are meant to further distance listening. However, Creative Labs has managed to design a system that can function extremely well in close proximity for PC gaming and still not lose much definition when sitting on a couch watching a movie. So I think it's safe to say that you can get a fantastic audio experience for $300. Believe it or not, I'm selling my Bose Companions right after this video goes live because the Katana has taken a spot on my desk as my permanent desktop speaker or uh, under monitor audio system if I were to put it in technical terms. It's compact, well designed, and most importantly, it sounds amazing. I just wish the driver software worked with my workstation PC, but I'm hoping that the final release version could solve the issue. RGB is a nice touch to the speaker and I think those who are interested would enjoy color matching their peripherals. What are your thoughts on the Sound Blaster X Katana from Creative Labs? Uh, would you be picking this up for the holidays? I think it's a great gift for gamers. I'm Ebor with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.